Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Today is our 30th monthly Q&A, so my apologies in advance to all whose names I will butcher today. I will answer some very interesting questions from the community members, but first, let's warm up with Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's topic is Mian Mian Ruo Cun Yong Zhi Bu Qin a famous Taoist concept from uh, Chapter 6 of Tao De Jing. In Chapter 6, Lao Zi continued talking about the nature of Tao, the concept introduced in the prior chapter which says that Tao existed before heaven and earth, or Tian and Di. This chapter is uh, very short, but Lao Zi introduced many important philosophical concepts in this chapter, which will be introduced here. In total, there are only six sentences in this chapter, and each pair of sentences focuses on a specific concept. So, in total, there are three pairs of sentences in this whole chapter. The six sentences are quote, 古神不死是为玄拼,玄拼之门是为天地根,绵绵若纯,用之不勤 End quote. Translation, the valley spirit never dies. It is named the mysterious female, and the doorway of the mysterious female is the base from which heaven and earth spring. They are ceaselessly in action, as though permanent, and may be drawn upon without ever being exhausted. So, many terms have been introduced in these short paragraphs as uh, Gu Shen or Valley Spirit, Xuan Pin or Mysterious Female, both of which are important concepts used to describe the nature of the Tao, which are also used in Taoist energy practice. I will explain them in more detail in the future, but in today's video, I will focus only on the last two sentences, Mian Mian Ruo Cun, Yong Zhi Bu Qin. So, what exactly is Mian Mian Ruo Cun, Yong Zhi Bu Qin? It is a term used to describe the prosperity of a Tao, that Tao lasts as if it is everlasting, which when used, it is inexhaustible. In other words, Tao seems to be able to go on forever and continues to function effortlessly. By the way, the word Qin actually should be pronounced as Jin. Since in ancient times, people used different words to express the same meaning, so Qin here should be another word, Jin. So, Lao Zi used the word valley to describe the emptiness of Tao, and the word Shen or spirit to describe that Tao can generate everything in the universe. Since Tao is never dying and inexhaustible. Tao is everlasting. This is why Tao is called Eternal Tao or Chang Tao, which has been introduced in the first chapter of Tao De Jing. That's why even though this chapter is very short, it is very important. In Xiu Dao practice, these six sentences have been used as the fundamental concept of guiding the energy refinement process in all Taoist schools. For example, prenatal energy is the Xuan Pin, it is the valley spirit in the emptiness. So, the method used in energy refinement is Mian Mian Ruo Cun, Yong Zhi Bu Qin, or refined energy in the emptiness without forcing and neglecting any subtle energy changes in practice. So, focus on the whole body, and then let the energy rise naturally 
to enter the mystery gate of Xuanguan. Then let the Tai Xi or embryotic breathing emerge. Then apply the right level of the fire and the wind to refine the prenatal energy. As for Tai Xi or embryotic breathing, check out my video titled Xiu Dao Concept 12 Tai Xi Embryotic Breathing. Link is in the description. Tai Xi is the critical term in Xiu Dao practice. To summarize, this chapter describes the nature of Tao. These two important sentences mian mian ruo chun, yong zhi bu xin, teach a practitioner how to refine energy in Xiu Dao. With that, let's get on with our Q&A. Questions answered in today's video include First, um, Hina Jenna, Xin Fa. Next, Bruno, Xin Yi Ba. Next, no, uh, Mike Tovish, Fever, Bagua Single and Double Pump Change. Next, Diablo Rojo, Chen Style vs. Other Styles. Next, uh, Virginie Suko Hovi Nabo, uh, Xiu Dao for Internal Stylist. Next, from uh, Kelly Crawford Johnson, Yi Jin Jing and Nei Gong. Next, One Direction. Xing Yi and Sandbag Training. Next, Offer JRL, Need for Chen Style Cannon Fist. Next, Eric Potter, Zheng Ti Jin vs. Fa Jin. Next, Tracy, Fa Jin for Tai Chi and Ba Gua. Next, um, Masik, Identifying Good Teachers. Finally, Masik, Female Immortals in Taoism. So, let's get started. Hina Jana asked a question about Xin Fa. Quote, Does it related to the three internal harmonies, Xin Yi Qi? So, the meaning is the usage of the Xin intention that brings the mind that derived Qi. Or does this mean the classic way how an indoor student learns from a master directly? Or it can mean both depending on the context. End quote. Thank you, Hina Jana, for this culture related question. The term Xin Fa consists of two words Xin and Fa. Xin means heart, mind, Fa means method. Xin Fa was originally a Buddhist term meaning teaching beyond the classics, or knowledge transmission between minds. Later, this term came to be widely used in many practices like meditation, qigong, and martial arts. As a result, the term xin fa has acquired additional meanings. The new meaning in the context of a martial art practice is teaching of important concept and method. Usually, this term is used in situations where a teacher shares some important practice with the good students. That's what the Xin Fa, originally a Buddhist term, means in martial art teaching. Hina Jana, I hope I have answered your question. Let's move on to the next question. Bruno asked about Xin Yi Ba. Quote, I would like to ask you a question about Shaolin. Xin Yi Ba. Do you know if this Xin Yi branch is the most conserved one from Ji Longfeng times? Can you share some information about the content of Xin Yi Ba? End quote. Thank you, Bruno, for this question. Just so everyone is aware, Xin Yi Ba is a Shaolin art, and I have little to no background in any Shaolin practice. So, I will answer this based on documents and conversations with other practitioners. According to some written and teaching records, Xin Yi Ba was taught by Ji Longfeng, the Xin Yi founder, when he visited the Shaolin Temple. However, some people said that Xin Yi Ba existed only in conceptual form, not practical form, back then. But 
Most people believe that there are 12 movements in this practice and those 12 movements are just some single movements which are very close to the Xin Yi movements. Some people even said that the painting on the wall at Bai Yi Dian or Bai Yi Palace in Shaolin Temple which was painted in the Qing Dynasty was actually based on Xin Yi Bar practice. So, there is no unanimous agreement on this. I have seen some Xin Yi Bar demonstrations by Shaolin monks and Shaolin practitioners, all of them claiming their forms to be Xin Yi Bar and uh, speaking from observation. All of their demonstrations were just like some Xin Yi movement with Shaolin flavor. So, to answer your question directly, I say they can call it whatever they want if they have a proof. Also, I like them all even though I do not practice them myself. Hope this answer helps, Bruno. Thank you for asking, let's move on to the next question. McTowish Fever asked two questions about Bagua. His first question is about the purpose of the single and the double palm changes in terms of structure. Thank you for this question. Short answer, it depends. Since single and double changing palm or Dan Huan Zhang and Shuang Huan Zhang are two basic and most important practices of the eight big palm practice. Many Bagua techniques and principles can be found in these two small forms. For example, the single changing palm focuses on one direction changing while the double changing palm focuses on two directions and upward and downward movement. Also, the single changing palm imitates a single saber movement while the double changing palm imitates a double saber movement, etc. So, briefly speaking, the objective of these two movements is to master the basic Bagua movements. His second question is about the 16 words of Bagua. He asks, quote, should the 16 words of Bagua be applied only in Roushou scenarios? End quote. And this is a detailed question. First of all, what are the 16 words of Bagua? Well, it is a set of 16 words used to describe the 16 types of basic Bagua movements including pushing forward, uh, pushing upward, leading, pulling, and so on. Those are 16 words indicating 16 Bagua basic movements. Different schools have different versions of the 16 words. To further answer your second question, these 16 movements are mainly used for Bagua palm strikes in application and self-defense. Of course, most of them can be applied in Bagua Roushou or Bagua two-person training forms as well, but these 16 movements were not created only for Roushou, actually those are meant for self-defense. I hope I have answered your questions. Let's move on to the next one. <coughs> Diablo Rojo asked a question after watching the introduction of Chen Fa Ke's video. He says, quote, I'm curious about the other self Tai Chi. The only ones we hear about are the ones that evolve from the Chen school and why they don't believe Tai Chi Chen is Tai Chi. Is that a big difference? End quote. This is an interesting question. Yes, it's very strange to everyone nowadays that Chen style Tai Chi, the original Tai style Tai Chi, was not recognized in Beijing when Chen Fa Ke arrived. Yes, there is a big difference between Chen style and other style of Tai Chi in terms of movements and body structure. But if we analyze the different Tai Chi styles together, they all share the same characteristics of Tai Chi, which is. 
based on the yin yang principle. Another reason for this issue was that there was a certain level of conflict of interest back then, which exists even today but in different forms. Fortunately, Soon after Chen Fakke's moved to Beijing, the Tai Chi community in Beijing recognized Chen style Tai Chi with his efforts. Hope that answers your question. Let's move on to the next one. I virginly um, Suko Vanimo asked, quote, Which of the schools of Xiu Dao will be most useful for practitioners of uh, internal style Kung Fu? And uh, in particular, Xing Yi Quan. And uh, is there such a dependency at all? End quote. This is a good question. I would say every style for Xiu Dao is good. However, since martial art practice, for example, Xing Yi has a different objectives compared to Xiu Dao practice, the training approach is different too. This is why I said that. Any style is a good style if it is suitable for you. However, speaking from a personal Xiu Dao experience as well as analyzing Xing Yi's overall approach, the middle school of Xiu Dao is more suitable for Xing Yi practice. Again, Xing Yi practice and Xiu Dao practice have totally different objectives. Xing Yi as a martial art style focused on martial energy while Xiu Dao focused on different type of energy, for example, prenatal energy. One is for self-defense, while the other one is for self-cultivation and even a belief-based practice. I prefer not to conflate Xiu Dao practice with Xing Yi. Of course, it is wonderful to practice both, but there is no direct relationship between them even though they both provide many great benefits. I hope this answer is helpful. Thank you for asking. Let's move on to the next one. Kelly Crofts Johnson asked a question about Yi Jingjing's relationship with the Nei Gong practice. This is an interesting question and I'd like to give a brief answer. First of all, Yi Jingjing or Changing Tendon method is a Shaolin style practice. It has been very popular in history and continues to be popular even today. The legendary story goes that it was created by Da Mo, the Indian monk who traveled to Shaolin Temple and became the founder of a Shaolin martial art. So, people attributed Yi Jingjing as a creation of Da Mo, the Indian monk. Actually, the earliest written record of this practice is from the end of the Qing Dynasty. The book Nei Gong Tu Shuo or Illustration of Internal Practice, edited by Pan Wei, introduced this practice. So, it is the earliest written record of this practice. It is worth noting that the written record may not be the earliest existence of the practice. In other words, a practice may have already existed far earlier than that record itself. So, it is very hard to determine when Yi Jingjing came into existence. Speaking from research, Yi Jingjing is great for health. Its martial benefits and function may not be that great compared to a well-developed martial art training system. As for internal strength of Nei Gong, we have to define it first or it may get confused with martial internal strength. I have some videos talking about this topic on this channel. Please have a look. Kelly Crawford Johnson I hope I have answered your question. Thank you for asking. Let's move on to the next one. One Direction asked a question about Xing Yi's conditioning training by using a sandbag. He said, quote, So interesting to learn that Xing Yi was designed for empty hand fighting. In that case, is hand fist conditioning a traditional part of Xing Yi training? 
I'm referring to striking sandbag, etc. End quote. Thank you, One Direction, for this question. As mentioned in some prior video, Xing Yi was mainly developed for empty hand training. However, there are many martial art weapons training in the traditional training system, especially Xing Yi spear practice, which is an iconic weapon of that style. For example, most of the Xing Yi body structures actually imitate a spear holding motion. That's why sometimes people call Xing Yi's body structure as Qiang Jia or Spear Frame. As a martial art style, Xing Yi emphasizes body conditioning, including both the whole body conditioning and the localized conditioning of some specific body parts, for example, the fist, as you mentioned in your questions. To train the fist, a sandbag is a very useful training equipment. Also, when I was a child, my grandfather asked me to push small trees instead of using a punching bag. Only in my teenage years did I start using sandbags for training. So, this is my personal training experience. One Direction, I hope I have answered your question. Let's move on to the next one. Over JRL asked about Chen style Tai Chi practice. Code. In Chen style Tai Chi, why need the cannon fist form? Can we do the same training in the first form, in specific movements and in a sequence? End code. It's a great question. Yes, people follow the sequence in learning Chen style's two routines. The first routine should be practiced first, and then move on to the second routine. That is the sequence of how to practice these two traditional routines. However, it does not mean that a practitioner cannot practice the power release normally used in the second routine when practicing the first routine. In other words, a practitioner can still practice a lot of Fa Jin when working on the first routine. Why I teach my students, I always add some power training when working on the first routine when they are ready. At the same time, the second routine is more suitable for Fa Jin training since many movements designed for the second routine are better suited to develop Tai Chi explosive power. Likewise, people can also practice the second routine in a slow and relaxed manner as with the first routine. So, at an advanced level, a practitioner will not be restricted by which routine to practice but focus on Tai Chi energy and Fa Jin in neither routine. Of course, a beginner has to focus on the first routine and practice it in a relaxed and slow manner. Offer JIL also makes a suggestion code. Did you consider doing the following? To write an article that sums up all the valuable information that you introduced us regarding all more than 30 kinds of tea. For example, the name in Chinese, the name in English, the specific qualities of each type of tea, and where is the best grow and the best way to brew it. End code. Thank you once again, offer JL. First, I appreciate your suggestion. However, introducing tea was not really my main objective of that section, but to introduce a lifestyle by consuming a healthy beverage. My main focus is to introduce internal martial arts, Xiu Dao, and Chinese culture. Even though appreciation of tea is my hobby and passion, that is only a small part of it and it has been part of my daily life. I have to use my limited time to work on more important topics such as what I'm doing. Thank you for your suggestion once again and let other people work on tea topics in the future. All for JIL, I hope I have answered your question. Thank you for asking and let's move on to the next one. <coughs> Eric Potter asked a question about Xing Yi Fa Jin. I prefer not to read his comments but to answer his question because in his comment, 
he mentioned a person whose name is the Mr. BJ, and I have no idea who the person is. If you want, please read his comment by yourself. His questions are first, is Fa Jin a fallacy? And second, is in place force release useful? And third, the relationship between Zheng Ti Jin and Fa Jin. Let me explain one by one. First, is Fa Jin a fallacy? The answer is very simple. Fa Jin, or commonly called Fa Li, depending on which area of China, is not a fallacy at all. Actually, it was one of the most important testing methods in the old days in the Xing Yi community. I have mentioned many times in my prior videos that in Tianjin, my hometown, and also the main place where Hebei style Xing Yi developed. In the old days, Xing Yi practitioners would demonstrate Xing Yi Fa Jin to others in order to illustrate their Xing Yi level and training progress. In other words, Xing Yi Fa Li or Fa Jin is one of the most important methods to evaluate one's practice. It is the traditional way of practice, and some people may not know about it, which is okay, but to deny it is just wrong. Let me show you a screenshot of an article written by Mr. Di Guoyong, a good Xing Yi teacher in Beijing. This article is about the power and the rhythm of the Xing Yi Five Elements linking form. In the summary section of this article, he used the term Fa Li Bao Man, a term commonly used to describe Fa Li practice, which translated to Fa Li should be fully powerful. So, Fa Li is a result of a great practice and should be practiced specifically which is just a very common concept in any martial art. Also, in Mr. Di Guoyong's Xing Yi book, which we reference to Beng Quan or the Wood Fist, he said, quote, Yi shun bu Beng Quan, fa li zui da. End quote. Translation, the punch and the step on the same side have the most powerful fa li. End translation. So, he used the term Fa Li to describe the martial power of Beng Quan. I trust that Mr. Di Guoyong over others in terms of Fa Li practice. Anyone that still says Fa Li is a fallacy should first go read Mr. Di Guoyong's writings. Second, is in place force release useful? First, let me explain what an in place force release is. It is a practice called Ding Bu Fa Li. Ding Bu means in place stepping, and Fa Li is a power release. The other type of Fa Li is called Huo Bu Fa Li, or dynamic stepping Fa Li, or moving step Fa Li. Now, let me answer the direct question. <coughs> in place Fa Li is, of course, useful. Think about it. Is there a real dynamic stepping Fa Li? So called moving step Fa Li actually is just an in place Fa Li at the Fa Li moment. In other words, the difference between the in place Fa Li and the moving step Fa Li is just about the timing while the Fa Li movement is the same. Also, a great Xing Yi practitioner must practice both in place and moving step Fa Li. Using moving step Fa Li to criticize the in place Fa Li is wrong, and using in place Fa Li to deny Fa Li as a whole is an even bigger mistake. Logical thinking is an essential quality to a member of a civilized society, so please be logical. Third, the relationship between Zheng Ti Jin and Fa Jin. Let me explain. First, what is Zheng Ti Jin or Zheng Ti Li? Zheng means the whole integrated, Ti means body, Li means power or force. So, Zheng Ti Li is the whole body power or the whole body force. 
This is the term used to describe the nature of Fali, but it is neither a type of Fali nor a replacement for Fali. Any Fali or Fa Jin is a result of Zheng Ti Li or Zheng Ti Jin. If you cannot have a powerful Fa Jin, then you most likely do not have a Zheng Ti Jin. Fa Jin can be used to test whether a practitioner has mastered Zheng Ti Jin. Furthermore, Zheng Ti Jin is a prerequisite for advanced Fa Jin. It is worth noting that at an advanced level, the Zheng Ti Jin or the whole body power can be very subtle in terms of the term whole body. For example, in a prior video, I demonstrated the Fali of the upper body even in a sitting posture. Let me replay it for you first. Xing Yi practice does not involve exaggerating one movement in a demonstration by pretending to accumulate strength. Any practice rooted in Taoist practice should be natural, not pretentious. In the older days, practitioners in Tianjin often said, Dong Shou Jian Xiang. Dong means to move, Shou means hand, Jian means to show, Xiang means sound. Put together, it translates as long as your hand moves, there's a sound, just like this. does not mean the sound of the hand, it is the sound of the body, or sound made by body movement without any preparation and energy accumulation time. Now, the question is, is it the whole body power? Can I use my lower body part in this Fa Jin demonstration? So, at an advanced level, Fa Li should be executed in any posture, with any body part, without preparation. That is the advanced practice and if you have not reached this level yet, please just practice and stop misrepresenting traditional practice. So, that is the relationship between Zheng Ti Jin and Fa Jin. Eric Potter, as you further commented that you drink less alcohol now. It is good news. I'm very happy to hear that. I hope you will drink more tea and consume less alcohol. If you want, I can send you some tea as a gift. So please send me your mailing address in private. Again, thank you for your constant involvement and the progress. You are always welcome to post positive comments and practice related questions here. Our community needs people like you. I hope I have answered your questions. Let's move on to the next one. Tracy asks how to practice Fa Jin for Tai Chi and Ba Gua. Thank you for this question, Tracy. I will make more detailed videos on this topic in the future, but let me provide a quick answer here. First, find some movements that are suitable for Fa Jin training. Second, include those movements in your daily training routines and work on them. With time, Fa Jin, no matter Tai Chi or Ba Gua, will become a part of your practice. Of course, this is just a very simplified answer, but hope that suffice for now. Let's move on to the next one. Masik asks how to identify and evaluate a good teacher and on the Dao Yi Discord. He says, quote, could someone give an opinion about what is a good Chen teacher or good Yichuan teacher? I met a few of them in Warsaw many times, but they were not trustworthy nor did they train any animals. End quote. It is a very interesting question. I do not want to judge any other teachers, so I will only speak based on my own understanding. A good teacher should first have an authentic lineage, second, practice well, at the very least, demonstrate well what he promotes, and third, know how to teach, since being a good practitioner does not guarantee good teaching skills automatically. 
As for your experience of not trustworthy, that is a value judgment. As for training animal forms or not, it may not be an important factor to evaluate a teacher since many styles do not contain animal forms. I will make a video to talk about this question in the future, so thank you for asking this question and let's move on to the final question for today. Masik also asked a question about whether there are female immortals in Chinese culture. The answer is yes. There are many female immortals such as Hao Wenyi, Xie Ziran, Wei Huachun, Sun Bo Er, and so on. They all became immortals according to Taoist tradition. Taoist is for everyone. That concludes this month's Q&A. Thank you all for your questions and I hope you find my answers informative. As always, please do not hesitate to ask follow-up questions or entirely new questions together. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.